Foss Tube friends, it's time for another episode. It's time for another Fun Friday Floss Tube weekly update with me. I am Annie Joyfield Stitcher, both here on YouTube and over on Instagram as well. And this is a weekly updated video about what I've done in cross stitch this week since we spoke last Friday. And today is floss tube number 63, and these are crooked and it's bothering me. Um, <clears throat> and it's Friday, July 31st. Tomorrow is August 1. And so we have made it through another month of 2020. Go us. Yay. So I hope you have had a great week. Um, I'm here to chat a little bit, like I said, about what I have stitched this week. I have no finishes. What I've started this week, some of the plans that I have for the week coming ahead, some of the things that came in the mail, some stash and goodies like that, and maybe a little life smattered in. I don't think this video will be near as story heavy as last week's was. So I will, however, start out with a brief story. Um, so you may notice I have on different glasses. Other than my first video, I have worn the same style of glasses throughout all of them. Um, they're my favorite kind. I buy them time and time again. They are from Zenny Optical or Zenny um, online. It is great as long as you have prescription, you put your specifications in. They ship you your glasses. The price that's shown is including basic lenses. Now, if you need like fancy lenses or you want polarized or blue blockers or um, extra anti-reflective or blah, 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 all the extra stuff. So my favorite pair of glasses that I've worn every video except the first one um, are literally, if I buy them with no extras, $6.95 full deal like frames and lenses so I will link Zenny down below it's not like an affiliate or anything it's just I like getting my glasses from them now I will say you do run the risk with Zenny because you don't go and try things on now, you can upload a picture of your face and get kind of a virtual try on so to speak um here's the thing I also have prescription sunglasses. So when I'm driving or I'm out, I swap glasses. Well, I noticed today when I was swapping from my sunglasses back to my regular glasses when I got in the house, that my regular glasses are really loose on one of the temples and the screw is stripped. So I think they are on their way out. I need to order some more. However, my prescription's like over a year old and I really need to go to the eye doctor. I was supposed to go today. That didn't happen. Um, it didn't happen because when I got there, it's hot as blazes here in Texas. Hot as blazes. They did the thermal scan on my forehead and set it errored out. To which the gentleman responded, that means you have a fever over 130. I looked at him and I said, no. <laughs> an error means an error. Like if it's 103, it's going to show 103. Oh no, no, our thermometer shows error when it's over 103. I said, sir, as politely as I could, if I had 103 fever, I would not be here. I would be in bed and miserable. I don't, I don't do fever well. And, um, so he said, okay, and he sat me down in these little chairs to wait with a fan blowing on me. Okay, fine. Good deal. He said, we'll be back to check on you in a minute. So he walked away. He left the thermometer with the desk lady, and I'm sitting there. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned briefly about anxiety. Anxiety about what all we're going through right now and it bubbling up other things but I've been in counseling and things have been going really well for me well I'm sitting there and I'm a little perturbed but I'm starting to get a little like ooh, like flustered which probably does not help with the fact that I'm on my forehead I'm reading hot now today I was wearing my mask and 
for some reason it's made exactly like all my other ones. I couldn't reach homeostasis. I call it homeostasis when I get to the point where my mask goes under my glasses and doesn't fog my glasses or send hot breath up all onto my face and into my hair. I couldn't reach that today. I was either fogging up one lens or the other lens or both lenses. It was just a hot mess. And my head felt like damp-ish because I'm blowing hot breath up on my forehead. So I'm sitting there trying to keep my cool, not get not get upset, not get frustrated and think, okay, maybe the, the thermometer will work the next time. Come back up, the girl comes back over, does it again. Oh no, it's still erroring. You have 103 or more. And I'm like, there's no way. I feel I'm good. But I get that that's their protocols. I said, do you have another thermometer? Can we try that one just to see? Because in my mind, I'm thinking an error doesn't mean that. Um, my mom at her business has the thermal scan ones. Personally, I don't put a lot of stock into if I'm like trying to take my child's temperature, like to see if she's how sick she's feeling or like if she can go to school or not. We do it old school with a real thermometer. Like we don't do any of this business. Because I know there's too many measures of error. However, I understand we cannot do oral because it's not like a normal doctor's office where they can put the little shield on the thermometer and da 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 da. I get that. But I'm still thinking, oy vey, I had to squeeze this appointment in before I go back to work on Monday. I desperately need to order some new glasses. So I'm probably just going to spend the 10 bucks or whatever, including the shipping, to order another pair of my favorite kind of glasses. And if my prescription changes, I'll order another pair. Like, so anywho, make a long story short, the thing keeps erroring. The girl brings over another thermometer and it's giving an error. And she's like, oh, that means, you know, you're, you're too hot. You can't, you can't stay. And I said, can you try it on yourself? Or go try it on the other lady and see. Well, they went over there and they had some little dialogue and they tried it on each other. Well, I don't know the results of that because the girl got up, went to try it on people in the back. All I know is she came back over to me, scanned me with both of them. Didn't show me what either of them said. Like, I've not seen a temperature on any of these. I've only seen the two error messages on the one. I never saw what the secondary one showed because it was a different brand. And she said, you're reading over 100 on both of these. And I said, can I, can I see my temperatures? She said, you're reading over 100. Do you not trust me? So I said, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and leave for today. And she goes, do you want to reschedule? And I said, no. So I came home. I, dr I had no water in the car or anything. So I drank nothing. I t let nothing touch my mouth. I called my husband. I said, but get the thermometers out. We have two oral thermometers. And he goes, what is going on? And I told him the ordeal. I'm less than five minutes from the eye doctor to home. And he said, that's baloney. This has gone too far. I mean, he starts to get into, la, 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 la. I'm like, just get the two thermometers and I'm going to take my temperature right when I get home. And then I desperately need some water. I am thirsty. Both thermometers read 98.8. So he said, this is nonsense. He said, you need to go back. You need to take your oral thermometer and show them. And blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I'm over it. It had ramped up my anxiety. I was frustrated. Um, he even got the, like, his, like, his, um, he went out to his truck. And I'm like, where are you going? Uh, he said, I'll be right back. And he went out and got his, he has a like thermal gun that he got that's like Black & Decker or something. I don't know what brand it is. He put that thing up to me. Because you know you use it to like check your air to see what temperature's coming out of the vent. He goes, you're perfectly fine. I said, okay, well this is done for today. He said, no, call your mom. See what she thinks you should do. Because he had to get ready to go to work. So I called my mom. She goes, oh, you need to call the office manager. That is not okay. You've been going there too long. It sounds, and she's like, and if Aaron, da, 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 she goes, I've read all the literature. And so I've got everybody up in arms. So I did end up calling and speaking with the office manager who was so wonderful. And the people at the local, at the one were not, were not unkind. And she goes, yeah, it's not right that they didn't show you the temperatures. 
but you know, we have to be safe. I said, I completely understand, but I do truly question whether they had just determined at that point that I had a fever and that they were not going to serve me. She goes, yeah, that's not right. And she said, well, would you be willing to go back up with your oral thermometer? Because you're kind of teaching us right now. And I said, I can't. Um, I mean, I guess I could have loaded up my kiddo, who was still in PJs, mind you, um, and was, like, wanting to start, like, getting ready for lunch and things like that. Um, because my husband had to go to work, get ready to go to work. And he had to go check on his dad because mm, that's a whole other different story. So I finally just said... I'll just reschedule for another day. No hard feelings. She goes, wow, you've been, like, you've been coming to us for a really long time. And I was like, yeah. She goes, I've only been here since 2002, and you've been seeing us since before then. I said, I know. And I continue to come back because I really do believe that you're a great establishment. It is frustrating to me that I feel perfectly fine. She goes, honestly, the thermal scanners are not anywhere close to as accurate as a like medical grade thermometer she goes it may be something that we encourage our people now that it's really hot to bring their oral thermometer if they have one and take it themselves and I said I would be willing to do that to not have to do what I did today because now unfortunately she's like well when would you like to reschedule how about da -da -da -da? I was like I go back to work on Monday I don't know what that's going to look like and I need to try to conserve some days so anyway, that was my trauma and drama today. My hair is actually looking fairly nice considering I did it this morning. I got a new uh, blow dryer. That's a blow dryer brush. It's pretty cool. Um, I didn't bring it to show or anything. But it like start to finish. Now granted, I have a lot of very, very fine hair. Like a lot, but it's very fine. And I'm starting to kind of get aged and balding in the back. But that's okay. But this is like a round brush that you like dry your hair with the round brush. And I was like, this is awesome because my thing with hair straighteners, I don't, I love a hair straightener, but my hair always smells cooked, like the cooked hair smell. So I'm always looking for something that will give me a nice smooth look if I'm going for that. Um, Cause when my hair gets to about this length, the curl and wave is kind of iffy here, there and everywhere. And also hormones jack with my hair specifications. So anyway, it's by a company called Lange. They were having a good sale. It's L apostrophe A-N-G-E. Um, I know Revlon makes one like it, but I really, I wanted this one. Whatever. So anyway, that was a long drawn out story as to why I'm wearing different glasses. And I said it wasn't going to be a story time. But you know, that just happens. So let me see if there's anything else on here. Yeah, there's some other lifey type things, but I'll, I'll update that a little later on. So, let me, now that we're kind of through the chat, 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 I'm going to try to do timestamps because I know some people are not interested in hearing me ramble on about this, that, and the other. They just want to see the stitching project. So, I'm going to see about that because I know that it's become a bit easier to do. We'll see. Um... Thank you so much if you are uh, a returning Floss Tube friend. If you have been with me for a video or two or 62 um, or more because I had some extras in there. I really just want to thank you. And I would also really like to thank those who are new this week. We've got a couple of few, a couple, couple of few, a couple of few, a couple of few of you. Um, that are new this week or new within the last couple of weeks. So welcome. Um, this is something that I started for my benefit as kind of a record of my stitching because let's be honest, I am not super consistent with Instagram. I said July was going to be better and it started out so good and it's just fallen off. Such is life. Anywho, um, it really means a lot that some of you have just really developed friendships with me. Um, and honestly, this week I was so uplifted, so, like it gave me such a happy feeling to read your comments, to hear how excited you were for my crazy story times. 
and also those of you that have reached out to me versus via private messenger or email I've had several this week that have thanked me for openly sharing my faith and not being afraid to and one in particular really touched me because they were hopeful that I had not received negative feedback um, negative comments I'm used to the thumbs down there's just a whole gang of thumbs downers out there on YouTube and that is totally your choice your opinion if you're somebody who's gonna give me a thumbs down go for it um, it doesn't hurt my feelings in my opinion why are you still watching and giving me a thumbs down and I know that not everybody is going to like who I am or what I say but I have said from the beginning I am who I am and I'm not gonna change because ultimately I want to be genuine I want to be who I am so that when I look back on this I can go yeah that was me at this point in my life this is a time capsule of 2019 and 2020 and so forth and so on um so yeah thank you so so much I know thank you seems so like not enough thank you just because we say thank you to like anybody and everybody it is with a huge it comes with that word thank you or those words thank you hold please sorry I had to pause briefly because dinner arrived so what I was saying is is thank you seems like such a simple thing but it just comes with a lot of gratitude um, thankfulness for each of you prayer and hope that what you provide to me I'm able to provide back to you I don't know if that makes sense but to me it does so it's all good so I think I should show some stitching. Are we ready to see some stitching? So it's gonna be kind of all over the place. I had some new starts this week because I am at the end of Jolly Joy Filled Whip UI. Today is the last day of July. Um, it was my spin on Jolly July. So I had, I think, when this all started, 17 whips that I considered like Christmas whips or winter whips. And then I added on to that 14 new starts. Well, over the course of the month, I did um, permanently UFO a project. So I ended up with 16 whips. So I, an extra new start. And one of the new starts that I was supposed to start yesterday, I literally pulled all the gear out and I went, I'm not ready to start right now. So instead I had two new things I had kitted up last week that I really wanted to start and and so one of them was the substitute project for the whip that I UFO'd and one replaced the one that I had shown so the one that I decided I was not ready to start was Lizzie Kate's Holly and Hearts mystery um mystery sampler so it was in three parts. Um, I had it kitted with the called for flosses and picture this plus earthen 18 count. And I just was not feeling it when I pulled it out yesterday. And I have learned that if I'm not enjoying stitching on it, it will sit and languish. So it's going to go back into my kitted project bucket. And it could be that at some point I decide it's like, nah, it is what it is. So yeah. So sh show some projects. So first thing, I'm just going to pull out some stuff. So this is just one of those project pouches like you can get on Amazon. This one holds a lot of my Barbara Anna charts that I started last Christmas. Um, some of them, I think two of them, one of them, I'm not sure actually, um, was included. And um, so this got pulled, spun for a whip on Sunday, I think. And this is Barbara Anna's Holy Night. And this was in the holiday 2019 issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. And I am stitching this on an 18 count country mocha with the called for DMC. 
and I put in a little over 200 stitches to finish out the snow at the bottom. And I just adore this kind of detailing. I think this is a vintage country mocha, not just country mocha. I adore how the snow is kind of the um, negative space, shows these really cool Ohio stars. So I love that. Um, that was one of the details that drew me into it. So I did put some time into this on Sunday, which was fun. And it was nice to get this one back out because when I got it out, I went, I still really like this project. Okay, it can stay. And I kind of have done that throughout the course of this month and touching so many of my whips um, between Jolly Joyful Whip You Lie and the Enchanted Stitching Challenge things I pulled from other whips and my 100 stitch bot projects, I've really had a chance to put my hands on quite a number of things and see if I still like them. And somebody had a great comment about when you, when I choose to work on something, put in a hundred stitches and see if I'm, if it's bringing me joy, if it's bring, I'm going to be a little Marie Kondo, if it brings me joy and happiness. And if it doesn't, then that's a good sign to send it packing. I think that's actually a great idea, but here's the thing. Sometimes I'm just not in the mood to stitch on something. I don't think it ultimately means I don't like it. It just means that I'm not in the mood at that moment. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't decided what that's going to look like. All right, so in this project bag, there is one project I worked on this week. This is AB Crafty Bags that I sent her the fabric. She's on Facebook. I will link it below. I do fill that description box with pretty much everything I talk about, and it will be there tomorrow. And this one has, it was, this was a whip from last uh, Christmas time I started this. This is hands-on design, deer tier, and this is part of the White Christmas series. And I am stitching this in the called for DMC or close on 18 count sterling from Picture This Plus. And I finished out the tray. I think I had already showed the tray finished. And then I added in some of the greenery throughout. So got a little bit more on this. And this is another one that I really love. And I'll be excited when it's finished. It doesn't have a ton left. It's got some little um, fiddly color changes. But I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And this project bag actually holds like four different whips. All of them you've seen. I am not going to be doing an overview of all of the things because I feel like I've shown them enough. So, yeah. All right, this is one of those uh, project, or what, did I, what are they called? Like document pouches that I got off of Amazon. I'll link them below. They come in a set of four. They're kind of this like shiny polyester-y fabric, but the inside is felt. And I find them really nice for projects that one, don't have a lot of colors, or like they're a PDF kind of a thing. So this held a new start. I started this on Friday, actually. Um, which was Joyful Little One's half birthday. And this is going to be for her. And this is So She Did by Teresa Kogut. This is one of her charts that she has available that the, um, it is a PDF only. And some of the proceeds from it will benefit a brick and mortar store, a brick and mortar LNS. So, and I am stitching this on a 27 count unnamed fabric from Be Stitch Me. And I adore this. And I got quite a bit of work into it. So I got her neck and like her right here stitched, the collar of her dress, and the outline of her dress. Now, Joyfield Little One and I did some converting. So I will show you. Um, the hair is staying the same because it's very similar to Joyfield Little One's hair. Um, we are switching the flowers to DMC 3328. That was her choice. Um, that's staying the same. The dress body is going to be in color and cotton winter sea. It was originally charted in a black and a gray for the dress and the flowers. That's not her jam. So we went with winter sea, which is a really pretty variegated darker blue. Um, she picked, I don't remember what this was for, but she picked this really pretty light pink. Um, this is a Victorian Motto Prairie stitching one. 
Um, this was the collar. This is color and cotton rain wash. This was the little scallopy bit at the top of the dress. I did have to sub in a Victoria motto for the hair color. Um, this is Sahara Sunset. And then all the rest are as called for or, cl or close um, because I didn't necessarily have all the DMC. Um, so I got close on some of them. And this is a fun stitch, and I am loving the 27 count. I did switch up my Be Stitch Me fabric of the month to the 27 count. I actually went ahead and switched up my color and cotton to the 20 count, Ada, to build up some of my other favorites. And there is no Friday night fight night tonight, womp womp, because Brandy is working on Silks Club and Fabric of the Month Club. Yes, she has a silks club that is new. So she is dying. I think you get five 10 yard skeins of flosses each month. They are mystery. Um, and you can tag them on to come with your fabric of the month. So I did go ahead and sign up for that because I love me some silks. And I love everything Brandy does. So there you go. I did maybe place an order today when she announced she was gonna have 20 count Ada in some of my favorite colors of hers. That'll come at some point. I think, I got a shipment notification. I think it might be my custom order that I did for Snow Queen of Frost. And Frost is, I believe, not a listed fabric. So I will be able to give you a, a show of it. It's one that I think she's done in a Friday Night Fight Night, but has not put on her website yet. That'll be fun. All right, this is a Garon tote bag holds a couple of projects. Um, I did put some more time into this one that I started last week. This is Country Cottage Needleworks The Nativity. I did do some color converting on this. This is on an 18 count Be Stitch Me Ada. It's an unnamed. Um, it's a beautiful neutral. And I believe when I showed this last week I only had the words and this brown brown um, line, dividing line. So I went ahead and put in the green. The green is a Victorian motto, and this brown is a color and cotton. So I did do a conversion. Um, I, I do talk often about being able to share some of my conversions. It depends on if they, I'm willing to always share my conversions, but just with the caveat that not everything that's in them is readily available. If they were a Victorian motto like Thread of the Month or it was a grab bag from Color and Cotton or something like that. So this was a start on Sunday. This is a freebie from Plum Street Samplers. It is still available on her website. And this is Long Lay the World and So He Came. I think the actual title is So He Came. And it calls for a black, a brown, two reds, a green, a gold, and a white. And so I just pulled from Stash. And this one uses, did I write the fabric on here? I don't know that I did. I ended up swapping the fabric. And I think I had talked about not knowing exactly what I was going to use. Oh, what did I pull? Oh, you know what? I don't think I wrote this down. But this is a let me th think if I can remember. This is a 28 count. I, it's written in my in my uh, craft room. It's a 28 count from Seraphim Fabrics that I purchased off of Fire Poppies. A 28 count Lugana in old stationery. And I'm doing two over two. So I did go ahead and get in all of the white or white-ish stripes of the trees. It's just going to be a sweet little small stitch. Um... I love this Lugana from Seraphim. And again, I got it from Fire Poppies. They have usually a pretty good in stock of Seraphims I have found, um, especially in like the even weaves and linens. And they'll do an eighth of a yard. They'll do a fat eighth, which is nice because sometimes you just need a small something. That's, that's not even, that might be half of an eighth or even less. Here's another Garon tote bag. This was the March bag of the month this year. And this holds two things I wanna show you. The first, I did put some more time into the light. This is our light. This is by Barbara Anna Designs. And this was one of her Be Well and Stitch charts. She actually had two. I do intend to at some point stitch the other one, which was the key. 
but I did go ahead and want to start light. Um, and I believe it is still available. I will link to where you can find it. I know that um, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle G, Bendy Stitchy, has highlight reels on her Instagram, as far as I know. This is on 25 count Stormy Night Lugana. I'm stitching this one over one full cross. So this is a tiny version of it. And I am obsessed with my fox. Amazing. She is going to be amazing. Like I love the one over one and how it makes it look like painted to me. Like it, it just looks, I mean, it doesn't to me even look like cross stitch. It looks like a drawing, like a watercolor drawing. Some of that is due in large part to a beautiful Victorian motto that I chose to be the main skin color. And it is maybe one of my most favorites. I did not have the called for DMC, so I had to find one that was close. And this one was close. And it is beautifully variegated. This is Heirloom Pumpkins. I want to say this was part of a pack she did last year. I don't know if it was still available. If it is if I remember what the pack was, I will link her blog below. But as you can see, it's got beautiful variegation between lights and darks and goldens and even some like brown tones in there. This is a beautiful floss. And I love that I, because it's 20 yards, I'm gonna have more than enough to do another project at some point. All right, so then also in this bag is my 100 stitch for this week, which is Joy Be Unconfined, which is another, this holds my Be Well and Stitch things, <clears throat> which is the Blue Flowers contribution. And this is Let Joy Be Unconfined. It's originally charted in Dinky Dies. I actually had a couple of them from a grab bag, from an oops bag, um, but the rest I, um, let me fold this so it'll fit a little bit better and not be quite so crinkly. Um, I kind of just pulled from stash on this. So I have some DMC. I have some color and cotton. This is on in... Did I write it down anywhere? Probably not. Sometimes I'm good at that. Sometimes I'm not. This is a sometimes I'm not. I believe this is an 18 count just mystery die from Mystic Fabrics. An 18 count Ada. And I'm going to be honest, I did not get 100 stitches a day in this. And that bums me out. So I do plan on um, working on this because I, I got some. But I do need to work some more on it. Um, I already had B and some vining. But I have started on let. Um, it needs way more time. But such is life. Um, and this week was one where I struggled to get stitching time in for various and sundry different reasons. Um, it wasn't like my stitchy bug was gone or anything. I just, there were other pressing things. Um, oh, and while I'm in this bag, just be, because, I am going to have a start on Monday. Um, Monday is my first day back at work and um, more on that to come in life update. But I thought there's this, this pattern has been sitting in here. It is another Be Well and Stitch. Um, it's been calling to me to start this one. I've had it kitted. I have the fabric. Um, it's going to be on a 32 count Lugana, a really pretty light blue. I have flosses pulled for it. I think I'm doing the as charted. This is the hands-on designs Choose Happy Be Well. I am going to stitch this for in my classroom. I am I am not sure if I'm actually going to put in the Be Well. I'm going to put Choose Happy because my prayer for myself, my goal for myself is to choose to be happy about going back. Um, like I said, more on that to come. Um, choose to be happy about just things in general. More to come. So I am starting that on August 3rd. So if you have it kitted and you'd like to start it with me, that would be cool. We could do Choose Happy Sal. And also Be Well and Stitch Sal. All right, this was a start on the 27th, which was Monday. And this is the Trilogy Nativity Lineup. This one has fiddly color changes. 
I am a center starter, truth, um, for the most part, unless it's a like one that has a frame of some kind or I want to do border work or if it just makes more sense to start in the top left. But traditionally on like a chart like this, I'm a center starter. There were like eight colors in this section right here. It is what it is. And I picked this one for an enchanted stitching challenge this week. So I had to get some good stitches in. I am stitching this on a 27 count Linda from Be Stitch Me. It is an even weave in Outback Jack. And I got a fairly good start on it. Outback Jack might be one of my most favorites. I have another project starting on it tomorrow and I will talk more about that in plans. Um, I went ahead and put in, so center was right about here. I, these are the three wise men. So two of them had this blue color. I think this is Brethren Blue. Um, this is current. Those were called for or close. I did go ahead and put in this uh, line because it's lineup. And then I stitched the camel's body. And the camel was a DMC close to what the called for was. Uh, the dividing line is Weeks Dye Works Pecan. This one is charted in all kinds of fancy glosses, but there is a DMC conversion, I believe. So some of them are DMC. If I didn't have the DMC, I went with something close or something I liked. <laughs> and such is, such is the case often. And this lives in a Amazon bag. All right, next up, this project was another new start and it lives in a beautiful joy bag that, Mandy made for me. Can you even? I have another one of these too. Oh, I love it. And this holds, like I said, a new start. And this is another row. This is Nativity Row by Bent Creek. And again, I started center on this one. And this is on a 18 count Ada from Color and Cotton in Colonnade or Colonnade. Colonnade? Colonnade? It's a really pretty um, light, light gray, but it has some blues and purples-ish to it, lilac, lilac-y. Um, and I got Joseph's robe, his beard and hair, and then the letters L and M. So this one is another one that I pulled some of the called for, some of the DMC equivalents, and or just something that looked good. Because that's how I roll. And I love this bag. It's amazing. Amazing. All right. We're still not done yet. All right. This is a Diddly Daddle Designs in hand stitcher bag. I like this small size for small projects. It actually has two of my new starts. Previous new start, current whip, and a new start. So this one is Lizzie Kate Wiseman. Still, still seek him. And I love this chart. It is one of her like little snippets. It's fun to have some of these little small ones on the go. These make good lunchtime stitching or um, like when I was in the line at the bank with everybody else and their mom this afternoon. Always bring cross stitch, ABC. Guess who didn't have cross stitch in the bank line? I didn't even follow that rule. What is wrong with me? This is on 32 count picture this plus in shale. It is Lugana and I have a start. Of still seek and this cute little sheep and it's this one is in the called for um, because I kitted it at some point a very long time ago with the called for fancy flosses actually I did I I think I, I think I got this at my LNS or something of those lines or got it from one two three stitch and clicked add to cart and it added everything but the fabric so yeah I love that one and I'm loving it on that Lugana over two two over two all right, one more project bag. It has two in it. So this includes my start from yesterday and my start from today. These are totally projects you have not seen because these are not in my Jolly Joy filled whip you line because these are the sneaky projects that snuck in in place of the UFO project and for Holly and Hearts mystery. Um, disclaimer. I chose specifically one of these to replace the UFO project because the UFO project was Dream Jones. The other one I chose because I really wanted to do a black work heavier item. So yesterday's was 
this insanely gorgeous chart from Doreen Jones. This was in a an edition of, I'm going to tell you, and then I will see if I can link it because it is a back issue of Cross Stitcher Magazine. You can get digital copies. Um, I have their app through the App Store. And it's the November 2015 issue. And I actually had sev. Wait, was that it? No, that's wrong. Ah. It's Ultimate Cross Stitch. I don't, I don't want notifications, folks. So I apologize. I have another one that's kitted that was from Cross Stitcher, November 2015. This one. Well, now I'm doubting myself again. Yes. This was in Ultimate Cross Stitch. Let me just make sure I tell you this. For, Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas 2018. And I saw this posted by someone. And I believe at one time it was actually available in her Etsy store. But when I saw this and went, I have to have it, I could not find it um, in her Etsy shop. So, and the original one that she, or the one that she showed from her Facebook group that linked to the Etsy shop where it was not available any longer was green with white stitching. This was in the Ultimate Cross Stitch 2018, and this is beautiful. This is not a great image of it because it's a little distorted, but it's got, um, it's like a white work. So there's cross stitch, there's back stitch. Um, it's beautiful. I am not doing white work. I am doing this on a 28 count hand dyed Monaco from Oksana. She is on, I have found her fabrics on Stash Unloading Cross Stitch Only on uh, Facebook. I link that group in my description box every week. I think it's like just slightly below like my contact info and stuff. And I am stitching this with, cause I didn't know how much I would need and I have a lot of this. Color and Cotton Dahlia, which is beautiful, and I am obsessed with this. So I started this yesterday, and I have, this is a center start on the letter O. Is that not um, so much fun? That floss is incredible. Angela is a genius. Genius. And this fabric is beautiful. It's kind of a light gray modeled. Um, I did choose this side. I was specific about the side I picked and we get in the part the half of it because it, this is only half of the piece because the other side um was a lot darker that is my back i didn't necessarily love all these super dark spots this one has some darker ones but they're more on the periphery my i think i'm going to turn this into a wall hanging or a pillow i don't know that yet i have to finish it first um but this is so far a fun stitch i love stitching on monaco I only wish that it was more readily available in some of the colors that like you used to be able to get. So anyway, this was an imp this was a swap in for the UFO project and I adore it. Plus it's joy. I need all the joy things. So from that same magazine, when I purchased that magazine through the digital app, um, I just slipping through and I saw these. This is a set that these this is a set of ornaments. Um, they're red work, um, mostly back stitch, but some cross stitch, and it's called Seasons Greetings. This is also by Doreen Jones. They're called, she calls them black work with a twist. They are in beautiful red. It does have cross stitch, fractionals, back stitch, and French knots, but she does recommend that you could replace your French knots with beads. There's three of these. There's the one I'm doing, there's one with trees, and there's one other one I can't really remember. But I am doing this one and I adore it already. It's so cute. Now I do not know if I'm gonna do the stitching to make the frame with the little bows. Honestly, I am so drawn by how gorgeous this charting and stitching is on just the heart that it may end up being just the heart that I do. I don't know that. I'm gonna have to get a little further in. I am stitching this on 28 count white Monaco that I got just at the Joann's at some point when I found it in a tube. And I am doing this in Victorian Mottos Apple Red. This is part of her Fabulous Reds collection. It might still be available. I ordered it 
if you contact her, if you look on her blog, it will usually say on the sidebar below the, the fabric and floss of the month information, which collections are still available, and then you can just email her. So this is apple red, it's beautiful. She converts it to 815 DMC. And I have an, a, a little bit of a start. I did start this just this afternoon, so I'm gonna spend some time on it tonight. I love it already. A backstitch is like amazing. I don't like backstitch necessarily like in every chart, especially like some of the ones that have a lot. But I think it's beautiful in its own right. And everybody needs something with red, right? Just red? No, it's not a red sampler, but does it follow the rules? Does it follow Laura and Brenda's rules? Maybe, maybe not. Anywho, I was excited about those two starts. So that is all of the whips and new starts that I had this week with the exception of, and I did not haul it in here because it's on my uh, tilted lap desk in the other room but I did go ahead and get started on um, Diamond Art Club Dahlia. Um, that is my newest diamond painting that I am doing. It is massive, it has a lot of black, a lot of DMC 310, and um, I have started one small square and just done the black in that square. So it's gonna be something that'll be a here and there, it's gonna remain set up in one area on a table and I'll get to it when I get to it because stitching is going to come and then I'm also throwing back in one of my other hobbies because I've lost my ever-loving mind. Going back to work and add in another hobby. Woohoo! I'm crying. All right, so I think we need to talk a little bit of plans. So tomorrow I am super excited because I am starting Pandemic. This is Long Dog Sampler's Pandemic. This is not my first Long Dog. However, this is my first monochromatic Long Dog. And I am starting Pandemic tomorrow. And I'm super excited. Little, little scared, a little nervous, a little overwhelmed because this is like a bed sheet. This is my custom cut that I got from Brandy at Be Stitched Me. Um, I believe it's 25 by 28. It is an 18 count Ada. I was going to stitch it over one on 27, but then my dear friend, Jenny, long dog stitcher, D-A-W-G, I will link her below. She does a lot of long dogs. And she mentioned that the back stitch can often seem lost. The finer detailings that are so beautiful in what Jules designs. Um, can get lost over one. And I was like, okay, well, like I need a reason to buy more fabric from Brandy. So this is Outback Jack. I love me some Outback Jack. And this is 18 count Ada. And it is huge, mungus. And I'm do going to do a top left start. It is going to live on my large Lindy Stitches lap frame, at least for the time being. And I am stitching this in... I'm gonna try to do this. Predominantly in color and cotton sapphire, and then all of the ravens and birds and some of the detailing will be in my, one of my other favorite color and cottons, color and cotton sapphire, color and cotton typewriter, which is a gray to charcoal to pewter, it's got some beautiful variations in it. Sapphire also has some beautiful variations in it. Um, I have plenty of the sapphire. I should have more than enough of the typewriter. I didn't even put them all in here. So I'm super excited. And my lap stand is going to live in a pillowcase with the project on it. So I didn't need a super fancy project bag. So my flosses and things and chart will live in a beautiful Amazon zip up bag until I finish some more project bags. That is something I have fallen out on is getting my more project bags finished up. I might find in my room, I've, I've, I need to go through my, my project bags because I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I have some beautiful ones that I want to sew up with fabrics that are mine, um, from my stash or from my mom's stash, but I'm not like motivated to because everything has a project bag. 
but I think I'd rather some of my stuff live in my project bags. And I think some, some of my bags are not my favorites. So I'm kind of like, hmm. So we'll see. I may be doing some de-stash. Oh, the project bags. All right, so some other plans. I am starting, like I said, pandemic tomorrow on August 1st. Um, I think there's some hashtags out surrounding pandemic. I'm not really sure which ones there are. Um, I'll kind of browse around Instagram and figure out which ones I would like to attach to my pictures, which I probably will only take very infrequently and only put and post even less frequently. Um, and then I'm starting Choose Happy on Monday the 3rd. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. Choose Happy South. Choose Happy South. Um, so if you want to stitch along with me and choose happy, then let's choose happy sow. I am going to have a sow in October for my birthday. So i got to come up with one. Because last year it was um, joy-filled birthday sow. And I had a couple people that participated. I said stitch on something that brings you joy. Um, but maybe some more folks will stitch along with me. We shall see. Um... August. Actually, let's pick 100 stitch for next week. I am going to continue that. And then I'm going to chat a tiny bit about August plans. So let me get into my 100 stitch bops wheel. So this is my 100 stitch bops. So these are all of my big old projects that I um, try to focus Monday through Friday on and get 100 stitches a day at least. So let's see what it spins today. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good monochromatic. That's Spring Dance by Modern Folk Embroidery. And it's in a beautiful Silks for You silk on the Stitch Me fabric. Maybe an Outback Jack. No, I think it's in, on something else. Well, anyway, that's a good one. Um, so, I had talked briefly in my last few videos about August being like ancient August working on oldest whips. Um, I know that Stitch and Mommy does arbitrary August where she spins wheels and she has her projects categorized by stitch count. Um, I was actually watching Jen Lee Quirks and Stitches and she said she started, she's kind of right now or has just recently categorized all of her whips by stitch count into these different categories. Um, I know that that originates, some of that originates from um, Heather Link is my homeboy and I'll link all of them. Um, she, I think, coined the phrase, the BAP, the big boop project. I talk briefly, I'm not trying to change anybody's point of view. Or change anybody's way that they talk about it. I love a good old BAP. My daughter watches back my videos. And she often loves to watch in when I'm watching other folks. Because she's interested in stitching. And it's her opportunity to watch YouTube. I have YouTube Premium so I don't see ads. Um, which is awesome. If you're not doing YouTube Premium you totally should about 12 bucks a month and I don't see any ads so it's awesome so I can watch like my playlist and I don't have any ads breaking it up um where was I going with this oh she asked me it's probably a year ago now or six months or so it was not six months because six months was still 2020 it was maybe eight months ago she asked me what's a bap and I said it's a big awesome project because we don't curse she's eight she doesn't need to know that there's these that's my preference as a mom I know there are plenty of folks out there that you do you as a parent we're not comfortable using those adult profane words around her and that's that's our choice does that mean that she's always sheltered from it? No, we went to New York City in December. Believe me, her ears heard lots of things, but she just didn't question it. She, I think she kind of thought, oh, I don't hear mommy and daddy saying those. I don't hear grandparents saying those. Maybe they're words I don't need to say. 
Um, eventually she's going to hear them and then that's where we can have that conversation. But I didn't need to have that conversation. I picked my battles. I picked my conversation. And so, um, in my videos, I started to refer to them as big old projects, big old projects, bops. So I have bops. Um, but I think what I'd like to do is sit down cause you know, I have all this time on my hands and go ahead and categorize mine into like, I think Jen said she had many, small, medium, large, bop, or bap, hers are baps, bop. Um, and then do a play on that. Uh, I had talked about Ancient August where I was gonna start with my oldest whip and work on it until it was finished or I hit 500 or 1,000 stitches, that's possible. Uh, my oldest one is Mary Sampler, which would have me working on that last, this month's first and the next month's first. Um, I think I could probably finish it in less than 500 stitches. So that might be just something I do initially. I like my wheel spinning. I don't know. And then I know September, I'm going to work on some of my samplers. Those will probably be my 100 stitch bops are my samplers. Um, October, I have no idea. October, I have no idea. Uh, somebody mentioned November being Nativity November, so I thought my 100 stitch projects could be my ones that were Nativity themed. And then December will be Finish That Stitch December, which is a good one to put Mary Sampler in for. So I'm kind of torn. Um, so, you know, how about you tell me what you're doing for August down below? I don't know what Enchanted Stitching's movie is for August. It could be because I've kind of completely eliminated Facebook browsing. I really only go in to post things. Um, I did enjoy it this month, but if I'm doing arbitrary August, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know. I don't like not having a plan. And it's tomorrow. Now granted, tomorrow and Sunday I'm working on pandemic. Monday I'm going to start Choose Happy, and I know with this new start I'd like to get 200 stitches. So who knows? So yeah, but let me know what your plans are. Um, I am planning, because I've lost my mind, oh lost my mind, and added in another hobby back. Um, Aaron, this is your fault. Ultimately, it's Michelle G's fault. I don't want to put any blame on anybody, but come on. Aaron, why did you have to start knitting? Because you're so cool. You are so cool. I learned how to knit shortly after college. I took one at my local quilting slash, at the time they carried some knitting supplies. Lots of Debbie Bliss um, yarns. Anywho, I took like a two Saturday class on just like basics of knitting and learned to knit a scarf. Took it with one of my friends. Um, she, I think um, pulled that scarf out about five times and then said knitting's not for me. Which, it's not for everybody. I know that my grandmother, one of my grandmothers, tried to teach me to crochet when I was little. This is so easy. Uh-uh, I can't get it. I don't get crochet. And then what's interesting is I've been around crochet people who are like, I don't get how you knit with two needles. Well, then I say to them, I don't get how you crochet with one hook but to each their own and so I knitted quite regularly for many years um I have a blanket that I knitted that was way super cool I'll show it on one of my future videos when I was pregnant with my daughter I knitted it the whole time I was pregnant with her and now it's one of her baby doll blankets um I've knitted scarves for people I've knitted several baby blankets um, not just the one for my daughter. But then I kind of gave it up for a while. I found, and we'll see, this may be the, the, knitting just may not happen, that my thumbs, specifically my thumb on this hand, would fall asleep. Like for days. 
turns out I have some tendon issues in the tendon that goes here. It's not carpal tunnel. It's uh, Duke veins or duct veins. I don't know. It's not how it's said. It's some fancy. But it's specifically in this, and it would cause my hands to go to sleep for, we're talking days, like numb. Um, that's my writing hand. So when I picked back up cross stitch, I was like, am I going to run into the same problem? No. Cross stitch does not do the same thing. Now, this hand is like super hand because this is my stitching hand. I believe that cross stitch has strength in this hand. So maybe knitting's gonna happen. So anyway, blaming this completely on the awesome folks, pulling out the knitting, picking up the knitting, sharing all the super awesome knitting patterns. So I am going to be casting on probably tomorrow. Um, this is one Michelle shows all the time. This is the Hitchhiker's shawl or scarf. Um, it is by, I found it on Ravelry. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, it is by Martina Bem, B-E-H-M. And she actually has a series of four. Well, guess what? I liked one of the other ones as well. So I might have gone on nitpicks and found some beautiful yarn to do one of the other ones. But I'm going to start with, start with Hitchhiker. And the one that I'm going to be using, this is a thread picker's yarn. And I showed this in stash back maybe in November or December. I have two, I had two hanks of this. And this is their four ply, let me tell you what it is. It's thread picker's does silks. She does not do always do yarns. Like as of right now on her website, she has no yarn. This is a, what did I do to this? I don't know. Super Wash Merino, 75%, 25% nylon four ply, and it's 100 grams. Um, it is a fingering weight, which is what this calls for. And the yarn that I got off of Knit Picks is also fingering weight. Um, I already had a Yarn Swift and a Ball Winder, like the Knit Picks one, and I have just an inexpensive Swift off of Amazon. I'll link the one below. You can get a Knit Picks Ball Winder off of Amazon as well. And this is in Mucky Pup, and it's really pretty. It's got like, it's tan cream within blues and pinks and yellows and golds smattered throughout. So it's really pretty. So I have two hanks of this. I have um, balled one of them. I have not balled the other one. Um, or I'm in the process of doing that. Um, Joy, the little one really likes to help with the spinning. I'm like, you go for it, girl. Um, she wants to learn how to knit. She has tiny hands. So I do not know. I'm going to do some research to see developmentally when she would be ready because stitching she rocks, but she's also kind of the stitching's gone by the wayside. She's done the diamond painting with me. In fact, she had a finish and I forgot to bring it in here. So I'll show it next week on a little diamond painting. And now she wants to learn to knit. She's a multi-crafter like her mama. She can't just be like on one thing. So anyway, those are plans. Let's talk some stashy stash. But first, I'm going to just show this haul. I briefly mentioned in my last video that I got an alert that this came back in stock. It was one on my wish list. I have mentioned before that Diamond Art Club is highly sought after right now because so many people have picked up the hobby um, throughout the time of being at home. And also just supply chain is hard for them because a lot of their materials come from overseas and there was shut down there and things like that. So if there is something you like, maybe I've shown it or somebody else has shown it or you go on their website and peruse, put, put a notification to email you when it comes into stock and when you get that email, run, don't walk, fast fingers, ninja fingers it, and get, snatch up your stuff. So, I'm so excited about this. This is actually one that I was thinking I was going to do in a full coverage. This is a round. And now their boxes have pink for round and blue for square, which is nice. Um, and this is a round with three ABs. It is huge. It is 77 by 55 and it is Hannah Lynn's Ice Princess. 
but this is the second version. There's actually two versions of this chart. She has one that is, um, it's less zoomed in and it has all of her dress. There's another animal down here, more of like water and snow and stuff in front, but I loved, I mean, I was obsessed with her hair, the lights, like the northern lights in the back and the owl. So I liked either one. I had both notifying me. This one came up first and I was like meant to be, so I bought it. So I'm really excited about that. All right. Oh, it's heavy today because I've got a couple books in here. It's Joy Phil Stashy Stash time. Joy Phil Stashy Stash time. So first things first, one thing that I've really been enjoying over the last, well, I kind of got back into it when we were going to the pool and my toes, because I've not had a pedicure since I think I had one over Christmas, but they last me for a while. But I have not had a pedicure in a very long time. And I like my toes. After several foot and toe injuries, my toes need polish. Just being honest. And I will go no further than that because I know people don't like talking about the feet. And I was like, well, you know, I have Color Street. I could try it on my feet. I know that a lot of people wear it on their feet. Game changer. Game changer. In and out of the pool. Looked awesome. So... My mom looked at me and went, when'd you get your nails done? Because <laughs> she's an avid get a pedicure person, but she's not going to get one. I said, oh, I put color screen on them. And so for like several weeks, she said, well, I think maybe you need to come over and put it on me. I think maybe you need to come over and put it on me. So finally, one day we were at the pool and she said, okay, when we leave here, I want you to go home and get your color street, then bring it over and let's do my toes. I said, okay, sure. Now at that point, I don't have, I didn't have a whole lot of colors. I have a lot more now because I added some more to my, to my, um, inventory. And, um, because there's some new ones that came out and there were some that got restocked that were either favorites or I had always really wanted, but they sold out originally. And so I was like, score one for the team. So on my toes right now, I have black cherry, bon black cherry bonbon. It is one that was older release I ended up getting one in my order that I did after my birthday party that I did last year with one of my friends and then on I did my nails this is Upper East Side so I do have really short nails right now um I tend to keep them shorter especially in the summertime um so yeah I do have some that I wanted to share because Jen Upton she is a stitcher she sells Color Street and she has a group on Facebook. I will link it below. And it's kind of like her little VIP group. And she posted a ton of new ones. And the one awesome thing about Color Street is if you buy, you get four for the price of three. So if you order, you know, a couple or whatever. And so I had enough. I, I just kind of me pleased on a bunch of them. And she said, oh, you're at this many. If you add one more, you'll get one more for free. And I said, just pick two. So she put in two and um, little one also wears these. So that was a score. So I got these. These are um, BU. So they have little bees on them. I love these. These are plaid about you. And these, I believe, if I remember correctly, are clear with the black. So you can wear them over any color. So you could do them over white and be like white buffalo check. You could do them over red at Christmas. You could do them over pink. Speaking of pink check, these are what the check, and they have pink, but then they have the pink check accent nails. These are insane. She had these on her nails, I think. This is Nuclear Fusion, and it's interesting because they're ombre on both ends. So this is the wide middle, and then it's got the dark to the medium to the light, and then light, medium, dark. This is a solid in Munich Mulberry, which is really pretty for fall. And then I got two sets of petites. Petites are great for kids, or if you have small nail beds, I can wear petites. Um, I cannot wear pedicures, because they have petites, and then just your standard nail strips, and then they have pedicure sets. My toes are not big enough for pedicure sets. I would be wasting a ton, because I wear the largest thumbnail, this one, on my toe 
this is the one I use on my thumb. So I can get a manicure and a pedicure out of one of these sets and usually even, because there's more even this way into some really teeny tiny ones. I can usually do myself. I don't do Joy Phil Little One's toes because her toes are like little potato chip crumbs. Um, but I do, I will do her fingers. Um, and then I got two petites. So this is tiny and shiny. She loves glitter, but I might wear these too. And then this one's cute. It saved me a spot. So she loved these also. She loves to see if I get petites. There aren't that many petite options. So I was happy to see there were some new ones. And so was she. She has on positively pink right now. I think it was one that uh, proceeds went to breast cancer and I bought it last year, but they may bring out another fun one. They usually have a collection for fall. This was, I think, summer. Hold on. All right, I had a phone call from a little person and I really did not think this video was gonna be this long, but you know, who knows? All right, so I did get, um, I ordered this from Amazon because I was looking for something to put my Mill Hills in for any of my mirrors. And so this um, popped up as bead storage. Um, it's like a little clear top and bottom tray and then it's got these little screw top containers. So I thought that was nice because I've noticed with the Mill Hills that occasionally the little class clamshells, when you open them, the beads kind of static, stack, staticify and go like everywhere. And that's just not a good idea. Um, I did get a couple of things from the Allison Rosen's D stash. It's Allison Rosen is a crafty girl. Her shop is its charm school, but she is running a D stash on her Instagram. And, um, so I got a couple of things from her. I'm not showing you everything I got, but these were some of the highlights. So I got Mary Thomas's dictionary of embroidery stitches. And it's got like any kind of embroidery stitch you could possibly ever think of. I don't know when I'm gonna take up embroidery, but. And I got another one, A to Z of embroidery stitches. So this is another one that's got pretty ideas in it. Um, and then I also got, two, this is just two of the things of fabric I got that I wanted to show you. I was super excited about this. I got some of this light blue velvet. Light blue velvet. And then I got some of this that I thought would be a super cute project bag. This is some Robert Kaufman Seersucker Madras plaid that I think is so fun. Or there's probably enough of it that it could be like the back to a quilted table runner, which I would love to make some of those at some point. I need more time before I go back to work. That's not happening. So we're just going to make time. Make time. Um, I did get an order from XG Designs. This was one I placed way back in like March and then it got lost for a very long time, but it finally showed up. So it came with a beautiful little freebie skein of silk. It doesn't have a color. Oh, yes it does. I apologize. It's Teal Dream. Teal Dream. I did get some of the Teal Dream in a 32 count Lugana, which is beautiful. This is just a small 13 by 13 square. This is a 35 count Floba even weave. I've not heard of this. And when I saw it, I was like, no, I'll give it a try. And this is in the color coffee. So I thought that would be pretty for something prim. And then I did get some of her um, Ada. This is 16 count Ada in Tangerine Dream. And I was honestly thinking this would be good with uh, Cottage Gardens Autumn Dream. But we'll see I'm not sure and then I got this real small like 10 by 8 piece of 16 count Ada in dark beaver gray honestly these will come in handy if joy filled little one keeps stitching because she likes the 16 count um, I don't know that she'll ever want anything on gray but you know I started out with all the brights and then mellowed myself out to a lot of neutrals but I'm do like things on some of the fun bright colors as well it's nice to swap things up like all right, so then I got an order from, um, actually, um, Diana, it is Kismet Stitches makes beautiful project bags, and she posted, where did she post? Her Instagram, I think, or in their Facebook group? I think it was Instagram, and said, DM me if interested. 
And I like her little half size project pouch. This will actually hold two like small projects. But I could not resist. I'm sorry, Sue, I know, but I could not resist this fabric. How cute is that? They're like dapper dressed woodland animals. Look at this rabbit's ears. Amazing. Amazing, like portraits. And then the portraits have mushrooms and stuff around them. I couldn't resist. And then she sent me a really sweet note. She sent me one of the cable rings and some fun floss tags. And I like that she already does the two punches so that you can have your waist and then your regular. And it was beautifully shipped. You know, the vinyl super flat. Um, I did, I placed this order again. This was another one that was a while ago from Traditional Stitches in Canada because this is where Miss Michelle G said to go for the Lakeside Linens um, variety pack or grab bag pack. This is called a 13 piece project pack of Lakeside Linens. Um, so it comes like this, beautifully stacked. They don't have names or counts. So you kind of have to do some like, obviously figuring out what the count is. The pieces are at least nine by nine, but some are larger. So I've got this beautiful, these are all kind of more neutral. And then this side I have neutrals, but look at that one. I think this is midnight. And I think that is a tiny 40 count. I'm fairly certain. So I do know it looks like I've got, well, I don't know, but it looks like I've got a good assortment. It does look like I have some 28 and 32 count. It does look like I have some 36 count. It does look like I have some 40 count and even possibly smaller than 40, 40 count. This one right here looks kind of like the one that I'm doing Autumn Drum. That looks very similar. Um, I love this one. And this looks like either a 32 or a 36. So I've got some figuring to do because I, I would like to have them figured out kind of at least the count so that I can make sure that if I pull them for a project, they're the right size. I do have a little cross stitch um, ruler thing, but more than likely what I will end up doing is like pin one, measure an inch, pin another count. But I'm gonna tell you right now, this is 13 pieces of linen, at least nine by nine, okay? At the price this is, it is a steal. 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 Less than $4 a piece. Well worth it. Um, I don't know if there are any in stock right now. I will link it in the description box. If you are a Lakeside Linen fan, it's pretty cool. Now, I might have also purchased these Lady Oak Create cotton trims because I'm obsessed and realize now that I duplicated at least three of them with my Lindy Stitches order. So I got Waiting Pool, which is a beautiful light turquoise blue. I got Nilla, love it. I got some more Mary Janes. I got some more Red Wagon. And I got some more Petticoat, which Petticoat is a really light pink. It's not showing up so much. Maybe if I put it next to Nilla, you can see the difference. So Petticoat is a really light blush pink. I just can't get enough of these. These are gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So yeah, that was a fun one to have arrived from Canada. Oh, Canada. I got my floss of the month from Color and Cotton. I do the, ten, this is the July. I do 10 skeins, all colors. Um, and so these are the first five. We've got Golden Ale and Hollyberry. I have Hollyberry, look at that one. Oh my stars. Look at that. 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 Look at how beautiful that is. Okay, that's beautiful. Okay, I have Hollyberry, which I love already, but who doesn't want more color, more skeins? I have, this is, I don't think I have this one. This is Bombay. Really pretty, dusty rose. This is Cardamom. I do have this. It's a neutral, but it's got like kind of a purpley lilac in there, a dusty purpley lilac. Natural Cotton, that's a great one. So that was the first five and they're packaged beautifully. I love their new floss tags with the, um, the punch already at the top. I do go in and add two more punches when I add it to a project. And then the other pack has some really pretty blues and things. So we've got 
Persephone. I do not do this well. But this has like lavender, lilac, and green. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Powder Room is another beautifully variegated one. Ooh, this is pretty. Spiced orange. That is a great fall color. We've got Zebrina. That's the name of the female zebra. Zebrina. And Tulle. That is a really pretty light gray, but it's got like some blue and purple undertones. That is pretty. Oh my gosh, Angela. These are gorgeous. I love getting flosses. It's so much fun. So much fun, all the flosses. All right, so then I placed an order with Salty Yarns because I was watching Danielle Stitcherista. And she talked about how they had, no, that is not true. Well, yes, she talks a lot about Salty Yarns. But at some point earlier this week, I considered or last week maybe, it was last week or the week before, I considered ordering some punch needle supplies. <laughs> I did it. I refrained. Um, I think it was Vanna on her punch needle tutorial who mentioned about the Morgan hoops that she uses. And when I searched Morgan hoops, Salty Yarns came up and I was like, ooh, Danielle talks about this all the time. So I placed a small order. Um, I got this little pair of Sullivan Snips. Um, I actually ordered the copper color because I love the copper color, but they were out. They did contact me and say, we don't have copper. Would you like gold or silver? I said, gold, please. Gold, please. Um, oh my gosh. I don't know how this flew under my radar because I watch Misty's Floss Tubes, Misty Purcell of Luminous Fiber Arts. This will be stitched sooner rather than later because, hello, patriotic, Quaker, a squirrel. Shut the front door with those acorns, the squirrel, the flags. This looks like a flag. I mean, Misty, this Liberty Quaker is genius. Genius. Genius, genius. I don't know how I didn't see this before now, but I am so happy to have it in my life. So, yeah. Um, it's charted in... DMC, Weeks Dye Works, and Classic Color Works, but does have DMC equivalents, as well as the quantity of stitches, which I think is a nice touch. I did not go in to purchase this, but I saw it and knew I must have it, and it is a kit. It is actually, goes on one of those Lone Elm beautiful shaker boxes. So that is now on my wish list of things to save up my, my coins for my dollar bills for because this will be finished on one of them this is a full heart by shepherd's bush is that not amazing oh my gosh the bee scaps the bird the well the giant bird i mean because like that house and then look at the size of the bird and then you've got the sheep and you've got the one like cute little gray sheep amongst all the other white sheep and then there's buttons and that basket and the uh, there's a bee button and a stitched bee but anyway so when I bought it it comes with the linen comes with the silks comes with the buttons and a needle beautiful beautiful I think this is going to have to be an, a, a start tober start if I'm don't, and it comes in, look at this tissue paper. It has anchors on it because they are in Ocean City. Ocean City somewhere? Maryland? I'm not sure. But anyway, that was super fun to get. And I, you know my love of squirrels, and we're getting back into squirrel stitching time. We're kind of leaving out of sheep stitching time and going into squirrel stitching time, which kind of makes me think, this one needs to be a start tober, and this one needs to be one that I start. Oh, I can't start anything next year if I do no new starts. Well, poop. This one needs to be a December thirty first start, but this one needs to be a start tober start. All right, this is going to be a video of mini side note, so please hold. It's one of those videos. 
I'm not really sure where I left off with the, I, I showed you the stuff from Salty Yarns. We're gonna move on. Um, I did get in a small order from, um, 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 from somewhere. I think this was one, two, three. And I purchased some DMC and some Mill Hills for Amira, um, for Ashley's Roses. And then I figured, you know what, I saw this one on Erin's. This is Plum Street Soul Sisters. I love this. And um, I am considering some tweaks to this. So we'll see. And then while I was at it, I had not seen this Plum Street, but like obsessed. Obsessed, obsessed. Like this is one I feel like um, Pam of Just Keep, Keep Stitching needs to stitch. She might have already done it. But this is Summer in Nantucket. There's so much I love about this. Okay. I love the bird sitting on top of the tree. I love the whale that's the wind, va wind vane, weather vane. I, I think maybe one of my most favorite things is the mermaid riding the white whale holding the American flag. Like a genius. I've said it many a times Paulette is a genius. The lighthouse is phenomenal. Like just, just so much goodness in this little chart. And it's actually not that big. Um, in the grand scheme of things, in some of the charts I have, this one's only 92 by 78. No immediate plans, but so good. And then this one I saw too, and I had to snag it up. This is an older one, because it's their old large chart. This is a 2013. This is Betsy's house. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I love Betsy's house with all those flags. That is Miss Betsy Ross's house, and it is awesome with all the different flags. So yeah, um, again, no immediate plans for this one either. That was a small order I placed like a couple of weeks ago. I am not doing Stitch From Stash. Um, I will attempt that again in 2021 with no new starts, but for now I am, I am good with not worrying about that. Those of you that can do it, I am rooting you on. All right, I placed an order with um, Love You More Studio Co. Um, these are not all four project pouches. Um, I actually purchased, one, I wanted one for my Bible because I do take my Bible back and forth to school. I teach at a Christian school, so I like having my Bible there if we're doing a devotional and I want to do a reading out of it. Um, for my students and so um, I wanted one that would fit my Bible but of course be fun and cutesy I love their pouches um, their book sleeves book sleeves it's love you more studio co and so this is a Tula fabric I actually have this fabric in a different colorway and it is going to be a project bag for me but it has a bunny a hedgehog a raccoon a squirrel a bear like so good so so good but this is the full size sleeve. So I did get this full size inside. It's got a pretty coordinating. They did change up their labels. They used to be down here on the front. I think they were iron on. This is also an iron on, but it's small and it's not obtrusive. Um, the other one was, really wasn't either, but this probably, my guess is this is maybe a little more cost effective. The other ones were cloth. So um, I snagged a couple of other ones that are kind of Christmassy. They have What's nice is if you're shopping for them, you can pull, there's some categories. So they do have like a fall and Halloween and they have a Christmas. And I was like, yeah, I have a lot of new Christmas starts. So some of these are going to be for Christmas projects. Um, I actually thought I bought one of these for a book, but now I'm looking at, I'm like, no, these are Christmas project sleeves. But this one's really pretty and I did not know it was sparkly. I don't know if you can tell, but it's it's got a subtle glitter to the fabric, but it's really pretty. And then on the inside, it's got these really cute holly berries and holly leaves. This is the standard size. They used to have a Kindle size, this, but they don't anymore as far as I know. This is a standard, this is a full, so you can see the difference. But I knew with the full, because my Bible is rather thick and it's taller than this, that this would be a better fit for that. Um, this one I think is one that Michelle has, and I always follow along to see what she's got. But this is beautiful. I love this. Those like 
way cool whimsical deers and I love the like mirror image and on the inside it has green and gold striped fabric and then this one super pumped um, this one I think is gonna hold the joy when I just started yesterday so this is one um, that has joy hope love joy hope love and peace so it's actually this would be perfect for advent candle ornaments but it's already got a great bag so this one's gonna hold joy um, and then on the inside, it's got this really fun dark green print. And behind it, it says, have yourself a merry little Christmas. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. So I love this one. This is one of my favorites. I love them all. Um, and I believe when I purchased a couple of weeks ago, um, I used Michelle's code, which is Bendy10. So you can totally use that to get a little bit of a percentage off. And they post new sleeves usually on Friday in the e early evening times. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm actually going to put some things in these when I get done filming. Which should be here in just one hot second. Um, so yeah, I have rambled. I have no idea how long we've gone because we are in segments. And I won't know that till I put it over into iMovie and do a little cut and paste. So thank you if you hung into this point. One other quick life update. I know I mentioned that we were going to go to the American Girl store. It was a very positive experience. Um, I was a little hesitant because it was my first time eating somewhere other than home or my parents' house. Um, but it was incredible. Um, we had gone at literally, I think the last time I ate out was when we went to the American Girl store during the middle of spring break right before our school closed for extra weeks and then everything hit the fan. And it was packed when we went, packed and hot. And so I was a little, I was full of a little bit of trepidation with was it gonna be hot because we were wearing masks and how crowded was it gonna be? Now I will say as we walked up, I noticed that they had lines on the sidewalk, which indicated to me that they were practicing knowing how many people were in the store. We were greeted immediately. Um, they did make mention of the fact that at the time their purchasing system was down. So we could not purchase anything at that point, which was fine, except that Joy Phil Little One wanted to buy her doll and take her doll to lunch. She was with her own money buying a large doll. She has a lot of the little welly wishers, but she wanted a large 18 inch doll. So she had to wait. And that was like the longest wait in the history of the world, according to her. She bought the doll of the year, which is Joss. And Joss has a hearing aid because she has hearing issues. Those of you that might not know this, Joy-Filled Little One has a completely perforated eardrum. And so she has some conductive hearing loss at low frequencies. And so there has been talk at certain times about either fixing it or her possibly needing a hearing support, hearing device, um, if her hearing gets any worse. Um, because we are not all about having a surgery on that that is not super effective at her age and how fast she's going to grow. Long story short, she fully accepts it. She has custom molded earplugs. She thinks it's cool that she gets these special things. Um, that she's unique in that way and so she latched on to the idea of the stall and was very excited about it um, so we ended up going to ours is two stories upstairs is the bistro and we had um, a reservation for lunch for joyful little one her friend her friend's mom and me um, but we did go ahead and check the dolls in for their hair appointments because they were getting their hair done. Um, Joyfield Little One decided to keep her doll at the hair salon until it was her doll's time. And then her friend took her doll to lunch. Joyfield Little One, up until we walked into lunch, still thought she was going to get to have lunch with her new doll. She did not. She was okay with it. Um... They have removed over half of their tables in their little bistro area. And we were kind of over in a little bank at um, all by ourselves, which was awesome. Um, I felt super safe and secure taking my mask off. 
because there was no one within even like 12 feet of us. The food was good, um, but about the time that the girls finished their entrees, they wanted to go and watch their dolls get their hair done and all that. Well, I said to my friend, I said, hey, why don't you take the girls and y'all can go right out because the hair salon is right outside the bistro. Go ahead and take them and y'all watch the dolls get their hair done while I wait on the check and pay the tab or whatever. When I came out, because it was a little bit of time, I came out, um, her little friend's doll was getting her hair done and nearly finished. And um, Joyfield Little Ones was still on the shelf because the doll that was ahead of her with the other hairstylist was getting some intricate tiny ringlets that was only half done. So, needless to say, friend's hair got finished, doll's hair got finished, and I turned to Joyful Little One and said, do you even at this point want to get your doll's hair? No, I want to go buy my doll. <laughs> so, I looked at the girl and I said, I'm so sorry, but we have decided that we are not going to get the doll's hair done. I said, this, this one has become impatient. Um. And so, is that okay? And they're like, that's perfectly fine. I think they're used to whims of little ones. Um, there were a lot of moms, with, I don't want to say a lot, but, you know, there was moms with grandmoms and girl, their little girls. Um, some girls were celebrating birthdays. There were not that many people in the store just in general, like even shopping and even less so up in the cafe. And so we did our little shopping she had the items that she really wanted to get. I had told her there was something I would get. Grandmother had said, I can't go with y'all, but if you want to pick out a couple of outfits for your welly wishers, I'll get those. And so she had a whole slew of stuff and we got all of that. Then we had the drive home and the girls in the back were like, wow, we got home really fast. It felt like it was a lot longer to get there. I said, guys that was anticipation and the fact that when we went I got a little lost went a little too far north had to circle back also they had something to distract them they don't they don't quite like connect those two together but it was a super fun time just seeing the joy on her face the happiness on her face being with her friend me getting to be with my friend and watching them just enjoy every minute of it um, it was a great practice in wearing a mask for a longer period of time. Um, and so that was really great. I am a st going back to work come Monday, August 3rd. Um, I mentioned briefly last week that the county health department regulated all public and secular private schools to be closed until September 28th they could do in person I mean they could do remote instruction no in-person instruction I teach at a religious school and we have um, we don't have as many kids just in general we go pre-k through 12 and have right about a thousand students so we are not a super large school um, the public school that I taught at that is very close to my house several years ago has a thousand students in their elementary school and that's a larger elementary school. Um, they've added teachers. They're spreading us, spreading the kids out. I mean, there are some great measures in place. Um, several of you reached out to ask how I'm feeling about the whole situation. I will tell you, I'm feeling more at ease about it because I know the plan or the plan for right now. And I know that we're going to be flexible. Since the beginning of all of this I have been praying or I won't even say since the beginning since my anxiety hit me so incredibly hard and I realized I need to refocus on his word and praying more and being more um, focused on what he can do for me and letting him take control of things hmm, I found that I'm more at peace with this and also just praying every day for God's will in all of this and and knowing that the school is doing absolutely the best for us and they're not taking this decision lightly and that going forward they will be very cautious 
and will close at a moment's notice. But I do believe, and I was talking to my friend about this, I do believe we're opening now to get kids prepared for when we have to close later. And the, it's the when, not the if. Um, because I have the distinct feeling that some of the public schools might never go back in person, not until the spring. Um, because they're gonna be opening up right at the beginning of flu season. How do you know if it's this or this? Um, and they don't have the opportunities to social distance quite in the way that we're able to with our small class sizes and adding in extra teachers and things like that. Um, now, this week, however, the Attorney General of Texas, the politician, came in and said, sorry, health departments of the state that have put out these mandates, you're not allowed to do that in the event that this happens. You can only go in and close if there is an outbreak in a school. You have to let the decision go with the school district. So some school districts continue to side with the medical professionals on the health board, health department, who have health and human services, who have said it is, in their opinion, not the right time with our cases still rising. Other school districts, not mine, but some others around here where I have taught previously, um, within hours, we're going back to our original schedule, to which there was a lot of up in arms about, really, you're going to listen to a politician who has never once done anything medical, let alone stood in a classroom stuffed with kids in a poorly circulated building that's old and so needless to say I have stayed off of Facebook because I fell down one rabbit hole and realized what am I doing why am I looking at this so my motto now is do not look at school reopening posts cross the board do not look at them they don't pertain to me I don't need that. I know what my school's plan is, and that's what I'm going with. So that's my, that is my scenario. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I have two things left to do. The first one is I didn't give a hug last week. Last week was all over the place. I remembered though this week, even though this video is also all over the place, this might become more of the norm just simply because Joyfield Little One's not here. So phone calls. The smoothie was my fault. So anywho, I owe you two hugs. So the first one is hug. Mm. Hug. Mm. I love a good hug. Hug. And then um, Teresa Kogut Angel Kindness card. So I love these. Love them, love them, love them. I do link them below. And this one, I love this one with the little blue bird. I love this. Um, and on the front, it does have a scripture this time. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm, pardon me, 37, 4. And on the back, it says, you are worthy of love and respect. Surround yourself with supportive and encouraging people. And if I can say one thing about this community, it is for the most part, for the very large part, supportive and encouraging, especially to me. Especially those of you that have hung in with me through the trials and tribulations of 2020, through the highs and the lows, through the hills and the valleys. Um, I purchased this bracelet it's by a company called Lokai and it has a white bead and a black bead and the white bead is said to contain water or snow from Mount Everest the peak of Mount Everest and the black one has mud from the bottom of the Dead Sea and it's set to remind you that our life is filled with hills and valleys great song by Torrin Wells um, it's a Christian song called Hills and Valleys um, but it, it the kind of motto behind them is be humble in the highs and hopeful in the lows so I have been very hopeful 
throughout my lows and my 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 hope is that when and if I get to a place of a high I will be humble um, so again humble in the highs and hopeful in the lows so if you are in a low continue to remain hopeful and if you're in a high right now I Wow <laughs> no I'm just kidding if you're in a high right now understand that not everybody is so I love that song by Torin Wells it's called Hills and Valleys and it's your God of the hills and valleys hills and valleys hills and valleys and I am not alone Father, you give and take away every joy and every pain. Through it all, you will remain over it all. So that was your musical interlude for today. So, if you hung into this point, you got a whole fruit basket turnover of fun and games. Um, so, I will see you next week for Floss Tube number 64. And I'll get to report on my first full week back at work and school. So, I hope you have a wonderful week. And with that, I will leave you with... So long, stitch well. I'll see you soon, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. And see you soon.